quantum security uh, track. And with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have John Lau, who is the uh, vice chair of the quantum security uh, 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 work, okay. work group uh, yes. at uh, SG Tech, as well as uh, a director with ASTAR. That's right. Yes, and he's going to be sharing with us on the latest uh, developments and trends in uh, quantum security. Uh, security. So thank you so much for your time today, John. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of our uh, things is uh, going on in the quantum computing a area, uh, quantum technology in general, and of course uh, with it uh, a lot of questions about quantum security, right? Yes. And um, you know, uh, a lot of people are asking, you know, what does it mean? You know, how will it disrupt the digital infrastructure that we rely on for our daily communications in terms of WhatsApp, serving the internet, using online banking? Is that a simple right. way to explain to people? Yeah, so today, you know, a lot of times we assess a lot of the internet websites and we see that lock, you know, uh, and that is what we have always been using to say that, okay, this is a secure uh, communication, right, end to end. Mm. Uh, but with uh, quantum computing, not that it's bad, but, you know, because it's, so much faster in terms of optimizing mm. uh, problems. Uh, it also you know, makes even a lot of all this encryption uh, challenged, right? So which means that a lot of the uh, algorithms that we're using today mm -hmm. would be, uh, you know, will be challenged by quantum computing. Yeah. A lot of the ways, I guess, we secure the way that we exchange information will be um, unraveled mm. by quantum Right, it will just up. simply it will break the codes here. Yeah. Oh, right, it will break the code. <laughs> I think... Uh, one, one key term that uh, people keep hearing is this uh, PKR, which is the uh, public key uh, infrastructure, isn't it? That's right. Right, so, right. Yeah. So, so, that, uh, in, uh, so a lot of all this, we are, we are talking into the, uh, the cryptography space, right? So PKI is actually, we call it asymmetric key. Right? It base, it's based on you know, transferring data on an asymmetric level, meaning mm -hmm. I know what's your key and then you know what's your key, and then we, 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 we use a certain algorithm to transfer it over. But that's where that algorithm is being threatened today. Yeah. Right, it's like a secret code that I have and you have, and then yeah. we can use that secret code to, uh, to sort of uh, uh, look underneath the hood and see what kind of information we're actually sharing. Oh, right, yes. Okay, at your presentation earlier, you brought out this very interesting uh, deadline. Uh, you, you mentioned that Bill Gates uh, was saying it's not 15 years, it's not 10 years, but we're actually looking at less than that right. in terms of what, when this will happen. It's yeah. called the Q day, is it? That's right. The, the Q quantum, day. Yeah, the Q day. The, the, when the quantum, uh, quantum, we call it the <coughs> cryptographically relevant quantum computer, CRQC. CRQC, yeah. okay. Yeah. So that's the day whereby, yes, you know, you can call it Q day too, uh, where there will be quantum machines available to break these codes. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. And some of these uh, track actors are not waiting that long. They are what you, you also mentioned, right? Uh, harvest now, decrypt later, that's kind right, of touch That's it. right, yes. So basically taking data that you and I are sharing and then storing until we have the quantum computer. That's right, that's right, yeah. So it, it's, I mean, if they can sniff into the packets that we transfer, yes. they can get both the, the first key that is being transferred and then you know, breaking every other session that's going go through. Uh, I was wondering when I was listening to that, um, it kind of overlaps with some of these uh, data privacy concepts that we have right now in terms of mitigation, isn't it? Like you kind of have to know what kind of data are important to you and therefore you uh, adopt you know, the best practices, the industry standards to protect this data to sort of mitigate, you can't really prevent, but to mitigate the risk of that data being exfiltrated by track actors who want to do this harvest now, decrypt later kind of tactic. Yeah, but actually there's no way to mitigate against them at this point, right? Oh. Because they can always, they can always uh, uh, sniff into the, the packets and not really pull out everything that they want. Mm, right, right. right okay. So the only thing is that, um, yeah, you know, so how do we get prepared for it? That, that's the thing. Mm. Right, so <clears throat> if if uh, moving forward, we can actually you not know, make sure that we don't have, you know, the, our, all our sessions are more protected by a new uh, algorithms. Right, right, right. Then that is at least we are we are looking forward in protecting ourselves. Yeah. And you talk about this uh, new algorithms. Uh, there's a term called PQC, QC. right? right. Uh, so can you explain to the audience what this is? Yeah. So so they are. We can call it PQC. One way to answer our quantum safe uh, cryptography. Right? Mm. So these this algorithms, which uh, the, the mathematicians have come up with to replace the current uh, you know, algorithms that are threatened. Mm. Right? So uh, RSA or ECC, those are being known to be threatened today. And therefore, if we can change them into the ones that NIST, NIST has already <coughs> uh, standardized. So there are three of them, one for <coughs> this kind of uh, uh, 
no, encapsulation and the other two more, more for digital signatures. Right, uh, okay. Then, yeah, we are on the pathway towards uh, securing uh, our communications. So it's basically revamping a lot of the um, uh, security protocols that underpins out the information exchange. That's right. It's quite a big job, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so, so it, it is. And so we are also relying on the vendors. Mm. You know, who produces a lot of this, um, the, the network appliances to incorporate right, the new algorithms into their machines. Mm -hmm. yeah, so once they can roll that out, then we are also protected in that way. Uh, but the rollout is where everybody needs to understand that there's a timeline uh, and you know how we're we getting ready for that rollout in itself. Uh, yeah. Sense. So tell us a bit about this timeline then, because um, I think... Uh, Myself as an end user, you know, uh, I look at this and think, you know, the, the technology that, that a lot of organizations have, right, mm. already in terms of legacy programs, in terms of legacy hardware, to revamp all the, uh, you know, security protocols is quite, a, quite mm. it sounds insurmountable. <laughs> yeah. So, so then it goes back to the, uh, <coughs> the, the CRQC that I was mentioning. When is this Q day? We, we can call it mm. the Q day. So when the Q day will be available, I mean, it will come about. And um, I, I, my personal view is that I think the three to five years that Bill Gates has mentioned, uh, I think that is a too close a timeline. Mm. If you hear from you know, the sharings by even uh, IBM just now, uh, it's looking more more back to the ten to fifteen years. Right? So now it's a uh, yeah. So it's more like ten ten, 10 years, years ten to yeah, ten, okay. yeah. <clears throat> um, and it, it, I guess it's not so much of just that, but no, uh, yes, based on whether people are willing to spend mm. and whether that could come faster, right? So he's saying that technology will be there. It's whether, uh, you know, people invest into the technologies. Mm. Um, so that said, then uh, there will be spenders, right? Uh, rather those who have the money to be able to buy. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the ones then we may be uh, more worried about. But then on our side, then the, the thing is that are we ready, right? So <clears throat> if you talk to the vendors, they are coming up with their, uh, their new, uh, no, their tech refresh or the new machines uh, quite soon. Mm -hmm. um, then what is our own timeline to deploy them? Mm -hmm. right? Because every company will have a, a timeline in which they will do their replacement of all machines with new ones. Mm -hmm. And so you, know, you typically, <clears throat> it's like maybe a three to five years period and so we must build that into our own timelines to replace. Uh, the other thing that we talked about was in <clears throat> knowing what to replace. Right? So we do have things like our, cryptographic, uh, our, our crypto assets, mm -hmm. meaning what are all our network appliances which will have all these algorithms that we need to change. Right? So we need to know. Uh, it may not be everything, so it goes back to then your risk posture. Right? Because, <clears throat> again, the ones facing the internet are usually the ones that are more, you know, uh, riskier. Uh, those that are inside the organization, probably lesser, but yes, it should all be a progression to change them over time. It's like yeah. a big, um, I think one of the presenters also say it's a big uh, transformation project. I think it's the IBM presenter, right? Yes, so it's yes. a change management project. It's, correct, uh, correct, correct. Yes, co yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's getting endorsements at the various levels. I mean, this would be a lot of effort. I mean, we talk about even uh, Assessing the risks that will take time, mm. uh, we, and when it comes to time, then we need the management to also understand that we we need to spend that time, right, to look into all this, uh, <clears throat> spend money to do the change, mm -hmm. uh, efforts, and all this will has to be accounted for. Yeah, I think uh, in cybersecurity, one best principle is you know tone from the top, right? So yeah. it, the change has to come from the top. Correct, correct. Right, yeah. and um, with your role, right, at SG Tech, you probably have a lot of conversations with different organizations. Mm. Have you heard of some sort of interesting success stories or challenges? Um, I think at this point of time, it's really sh about sharing uh, awareness, mm. right? So that's why, I mean, this session is organized mainly to, you know, do that sharing. And <clears throat> as we do the sharing, people become more aware and also new questions will come about. Uh, and then at the same time, you know, people say, okay, you know, this area, you know, how do we focus, etc. Mm -hmm. um, the whole thing about being ready is a big topic, right? Um, ready in what sense, right? Mm -hmm. So you had you have to be ready, like I said, you know, at the at the at the rollout level, be ready at the risks assessment level, and ready at really at the management level to be to be aligned and to assess, right? So so and to support. 
So there, there are different uh, readiness, and this is also one area which is not just for for us, but you know the government is also looking into it. So you know we are all talking about how we get ourselves ready for the Q day. Okay, so uh, talking about some of these uh, readiness, right? And um, the, I think there's quite a few initiatives in Singapore. Can you talk about some of these uh, initiatives in, in terms of getting you know these uh, public private sort of collaborations going or awareness going? Ye Okay, in terms of awareness, I think that, that's where uh, a lot of uh, different organisations are putting in a lot of effort, and that's good. Um, <clears throat> the other part is, you know, today we covered two aspects. One is on the PQC part of things, the other yes. one is on the QKD, right? So the quantum key distribution is talking really about uh, another way to secure uh, communications. And that, if you saw the diagram, right, it's talking about <clears throat> the quantum layer, which is, uh, you know, it's a way to transfer the keys. And then the encryption layer, which is any normal network, which you know, once you have the keys, you can just encrypt across the way the encryptors at, the, at both ends. So that's another way to deploy. And mm -hmm. that's one way which uh, the government is pushing forth in a big way to say, okay, now we have that uh, test bed available, uh, other than previously doing more proof, proof of concepts for the technology itself. Now we want to move forward to, for companies to come forth to really test it. So I think that's a really great effort by the government uh, to look into this. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so I think it's, it's the availability of different platforms to be able to share this. Mm -hmm. um, I think even in this forum, I mean, we are thankful for the various experts who have come forth to share, uh, even for NSCC and this area of the Super Company Asia to be able to host this event. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, thankful for everybody who has stepped forth. So in terms of the organizations out there that, you know, are quite still not too aware about, you know, this uh, quantum security or in terms of the general public, right? Not mm. too aware of this quantum security. Is that sort of like um, a couple of things that you want to leave with them, takeaways? Yeah, so um, I think there are various uh, forums today that are already sharing about quantum readiness, mm. uh, you know, this whole thing about challenges to do to quantum computing. Uh, it's, it's the next step to take back from all these learnings and say, you know, mm how does it affect our organizations, right? Uh, and it's really a proactive approach. If you, if you wait and say, that, okay, when will Q-Day come? Uh, you know, yeah, you're talking about 10 to 15 years, but when you work down to the days and the, uh, the weeks, you know, that you, meet, you work up towards getting it ready, it will take time, right? So, uh, and for different organizations with different risk postures, mm -hmm. uh, it, it will, you know, you have to assess that and then say, when do you need to be ready? So that, that's the important thing for each organisation to take back and see how ready you are. We've got to start now, basically, in search and right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not, the threat is not going, well, the technology is not going to disappear, right? It's coming, the question is when, yeah. and it will be sooner than we Correct, expect. Right. In, I mean, anyways, uh, always right? paint the brighter picture, right? I mean, quantum computing does have a lot of promises in terms of optimization, a lot of problems. It's just that, unfortunately, in the, in the cyber security, in the cryptography mm. space, uh, there's this threat, right? So, um, as much as we are looking forward for quantum computers to be available to solve a lot of our problems, we need to address this part of it. I, yeah. I got to bring up this uh, topic of AI very, very quickly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm asking you a question, but I'm, when, when you're talking about quantum computing that has a lot of benefits, uh, it makes me think about AI it has a lot of benefits, but it's also potentially abused by, you know, exactly, the right? right? Yes, yes. So, it's the same case here, isn't it? Right, yeah. So, as much as we are leveraging on AI today for a lot of things that we do and reaping the benefits of it yeah unfortunately it's also being used in, in negative ways yeah all right okay yeah so john i hope that you know our audience will take away with this and say okay we we got to start now um better late than never right yes yeah, we need to yes definitely we need to have and it's a journey so we need to work it together yeah. all right okay yeah so thank you very much for giving us a very very short glimpse into you know this uh, exciting world of quantum security i'm sure that we can deep dive further, but uh, I think this is a great uh, first step towards uh, raising awareness in this uh, very difficult challenge ahead Definitely. of us. So yeah. thank you, John. Thanks, Jane. Thanks.